Good morning, everyone. Welcome, and a special warm welcome to all you listeners at home. Don't forget to subscribe, give us a like, and leave a comment. God bless you. Today we have a little word to share. When I say we, it's me, I've got a word to share. This is something I felt the Lord speak to me. When I woke up Thursday morning, the Lord just spoke this word to me. And I want to share this word, because this I believe is a major key that is missing in our lives. We sometimes wonder why the church, the underground church in China thrives. Even when they know you give your life to Jesus, tomorrow you may be killed, put in prison, have your children taken off you. But they're filled with joy. Why is it that people in parts of the world are giving their lives to Christ? When they know they will lose their jobs, they will lose their wives, their husbands, they will lose, their, they lose everything, but they're filled with joy. And collectively, they are filled with joy. Why is it that there is such a cold, a lukewarmness amongst us? And I'm not saying you, I'm saying me, I'm saying us. And this is what the Lord said to me. Delight yourself in the Lord. And he will give you the desires of your heart. Amen. Now I've got to tell you the truth. I'm speaking to us, to me and to you. We do not have as a desire of our heart the Lord Jesus Christ. We are not in love with him. He is like medicine. You don't like it very much, but you have to take it. <coughs> on a good day, on a good day, on a good day, we might take five minutes or ten minutes aside to open our Bible and read it, to have a little quiet time. You may spend half an hour. Mm -hmm. And it's finally over. You can close the book and go and do something that you really want to do, like Facebook, That's right. or your phone, or your friends, yeah. or sleeping, or something else that you just want to do. Maybe you want to feel sorry for yourself. Or maybe you want to have thoughts that are very impure. Whatever it is. We do the hard thing because we know we need to do it. Now deep down we do have a desire for the Lord and we do love him. But it's like, I tell you, if it was an earthly marriage, he would have divorced us a long time. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, he's not like us. He's faithful. He's good. He loves us. He's pleased with us. He's not disapproving. He wants to be in relationship with us. But we need to learn to delight ourselves in the Lord. Let me ask you a question this morning. Is Jesus your delight? Amen. I'm not trying, don't answer that. I'm not trying to beat us up. Mm. I'm asking myself. When the Lord spoke this word to me, it wasn't to beat me up or discourage me or tell me off. It's not like that. But let me tell you, what place does Jesus have in your home? What place does Jesus have in your private thought life? What place does he have? Is he your joy? Is he your delight? We need to make Jesus our delight and then he will give us the desires of our heart. What does that mean? It doesn't mean like if you desire, what do you desire? Maybe you desire an XV 1900 Yamaha motorcycle. Maybe many of you do. I don't know. I'm just thinking of myself. Maybe that's what you desire. So you make the Lord your delight and he's going to give you that motorbike. Well, you know, sometimes he does because he's good, a good God, a good father. Yeah. I'd love us all to have an XV 1900. That would be so great. We could do a different church. We'd, all be, we'd become a motorcycle church. That would be so wonderful. But the Lord will give us desires in our hearts for him. He will give us desires. And then, we, and then he will give us the desires of our hearts. Do you understand? Mm. He will put new desires in your heart. Let me just tell you something. Right, I'm just going to use this as an example. If a homosexual becomes a Christian, they need to stop their homosexual lifestyle. It is an abomination to the Lord. 
But God is good and he instantly forgives someone who confesses their sin. But according to Romans 1, they are damaged. They have been, they, they, they've been given over to that sin. They need to be remade to have fresh and new desire for heterosexual, not homosexual attraction. God will give them that desire in their heart. A new desire for something good, for something clean, for something holy. If your desire is for alcohol, that you love alcohol, you love the effects of alcohol, you love to drink and you love to, that is the focus, alcohol is your delight, or heroin or something else is your delight. If that's your delight, cocaine, sex, mm. pornography, if that's what you lust after, if that's the delight, God will remake you. He will give you new desires. And it will open your eyes that you will see that pornography is something that is bad, something that is distasteful, something that is not good, something that is abusive to everyone who participates in it. God will give you new desires. God will give you desires for him. Amen. How many of us desire the Lord? How many of us delight in Jesus? I know, I know that some of us do. And probably all of us to a degree, and some of us more than others. I know because of the conversations that we have. If you followed me around with a, a little film crew and watched my life, you know, you'd see that perhaps I'm not as you think I am. There are things that are not right. There are things that need to change in my life. I need to have new desires in my heart for Jesus. God will give me those desires. Let me just read this now from Psalm 37. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Okay, so I just want to read from Psalm 37 because this is where that verse comes from. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and practice faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he will bring it to pass. He will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your judgment as the noonday. You know, if we took a fresh look inside ourselves, I'm telling you the truth, there's not much, there's not a lot of light there. There's a lot of darkness, and there's a lot of unholiness. There's a lot of unholy desires. But God wants to change that and put new desires inside us for Jesus, Amen. for holiness, for righteousness. We are a carnal people. Me and you, I'm telling you it straight. We are filled and we are a carnal people who love carnality. Carnality is worldliness. Mm -hmm. Worldliness. You can disagree and tell me that you're holy and God bless you if that's the case. I hope you are. But I think that when I look at the church in, in this country, I see we are a carnal people. We want, we satisfy our own desires. Let me just say this. If something goes wrong in your life, how many of us stay encouraged? How many of us say, Do you know, I don't know why I've lost that money. I don't know why that friend has left me. I don't know why I lost my job. I don't know why my husband left me. I don't know why. I don't know why, but Jesus loves me and I worship him and I love him. This is what I hear all the time in the church today. Why did God allow that to happen? Where's God in this? Sometimes I don't even know if he's there anymore. What does that tell us about ourselves? All that tells us about ourselves is that in my life, God is there to make me feel good to make me happy and to fulfill my desires and my wishes. We're carnal, carnality. We lust after the things of this world. Carnality is only thinking of this world and in this world, everything in this world. My sexual needs, my financial desires, my comfort, my food, my friends, affirmation, reputation, all of these things are very important to me. And if I, my needs are not fulfilled, watch out 
Watch out, because I'm going to turn on you, and I'm going to get you and hurt you, and tell you. Okay? And that's our attitude with even one another and with the Lord. And that has to go because it's a carnality. Let me just tell you something. This is the key. That God is good. Jesus loves us. He's for us. Amen. All of his disappointment, disapproval, anger and judgment apart for you was placed upon his son Jesus on the cross. And that's why Jesus suffered so much. Amen. So what is left now is God's smile. God loves us. He's not disapproving or disappointed with us. But he's open-armed. His arms are open to us. And he wants to, us to come to him. This is a key. 1 Chronicles 29, 14. This was King David. King David was a man of God who went through the fire. Don't worry about distractions in the room. Don't worry about that. Just Jack is doing some work with uh, Selena. Don't worry about that. I want you to focus on this because this is a massive key and this is the reason why your Christian life is so pale and weak. Now, this is really important. We've been talking about healing the sick. Healing the sick is so important. It's central to the gospel message. We go out witnessing to tell people about Jesus, to save them from hell. All of these things are important. But trying to do these things without a love of Jesus is torture. It's really hard. Trying to worship the Lord in song when, you don't, when you're not in love with Jesus is just like going to the dentist. You know? And when I look around church, and I'm not selling you off, I'm talking about me and us and other churches in Manchester... Sometimes there's a big show and people get very excited, you know, jumping around and praising the Lord loudly. But afterwards, you look at their life, there's, there's not a lot of kindness and goodness and joy and love in their lives. But when we look around church and we see a lack of desire to just praise the Lord and worship him and love him, that's a sign of carnality. Because you don't get much from worshipping God. Worshipping God is for him. It's about him. It's all about Jesus. So if you don't love praising God, that's okay. It's just a reflection of where you're really up to with him. Now King David went through the fire. King David went through the fire and his flesh and carnality was burnt up. Because God was preparing him to be a king. And I'll tell you the truth. You're part of this church. I'm going to tell you now. You're going to go through the fire you're going to hear the word of God, and God is preparing you to be a king. You may, feel, you may not feel like a king, but Jesus is the king of the kings Amen. and the Lord of the lords. We are the lords and kings. When you entered Christianity through confessing Jesus is Lord, you became a lord and a king. And we're in training. And King David, after his training, when he became a king... This is what he prayed one day. 1 Chronicles 29, 14. He acknowledged that all things come from God. All things come from you. And of your own have we given you. Okay, don't worry. Welcome people, come in. Hi. Okay, don't worry about distractions. Stay with me now. It's good to see you guys. Looking very cool with those sunglasses. Oh my goodness. Like film stars have just entered the room. Right, come on guys. Stay with me now. Stay with me. This is hard. This is difficult. Okay? Why is it difficult? Because we are a carnal people. I'm telling you the truth. It's difficult because when you, we hear the word of God, it's not easy. Is it? It's kind of like the dentist, you hear that drill going on, it's like, oh, I'll just, if I just stay in the chair for a few more minutes, it'll be over, we could do something we really want to do. That's kind of like coming under a godly message. I'm telling you, one of the keys is this, David said, for all things come from you and of your own have we given you. If you don't love Jesus very much, ask him for a new heart. Ask him to help you, he's for us. He's not saying, well, if you don't love me, I'm standing here, I'm waiting for you. When you're ready, you come to me and I'll 
visit you. No, God is there smiling at us, open arms. He loves us unconditionally. He's ready for us. He wants us. We need to sort our heads out. And if you don't love Jesus very much, then your prayer needs to be, Lord, I need to bring my sin to you. I don't love you very much. I, don't, I find it very boring to read the Bible. I get nothing out of it. And I think that's because I'm filled with carnality. I'd rather be on my phone. I'd rather be doing something, listening to secular music. I'd rather be doing anything other than read my Bible, Lord. And something's wrong with me. Help me. I acknowledge that all things come from you. So give me a new heart. I'm telling you now, this is the key to the problem in the church in this country. We're busy debating homosexuality like a bunch of clowns, whilst the people around us are going to hell. And one day we will give account to that. Foolishness. We're traveling over to other nations in the Caribbean and Africa, trying to pervert them with the foolishness that we have received from Satan himself. Oh my goodness, how can God stand it? I tell you, a day is coming, we will give account for these things. But anyone who preaches homosexuality is filled with carnality and is, doing, is teaching the teaching of demons. It is a wickedness and it is wrong. We need to love every homosexual. We need to, we need to bless them. We need to tell them the truth and encourage them to turn from their sin. We need to pray for them. We need to declare the good news. It's not even complicated. But if you have a carnal mindset, you're going to think, I want to elevate my reason above the word of God. So if somebody says to me, I just got fed up with my wife. I don't love her anymore. And she doesn't respect me. So I met this other woman in the bingo and I've shacked up with her. And you know what? God loves me and he's forgiven me. And they justify it in their own mind. That's carnality because you're just doing what you want to do all the time. And God can go and do whatever he's doing. Because I'm pleasing myself because I'm at the center of my world. And I then justify my feelings. So somebody says, I've always been gay. I was born like this. But I'm made in the image of God, so God made me like this. They're just fulfilling their own lust and their own desires. But you know, the beginning of a different heart starts with reading the word of God and saying, I'm going to submit myself to the word of God. I'm going to submit my reason, my understanding, my wisdom to the word of God. It is higher than I. It was written by the word himself. Jesus is not a liar. He tells the truth. He's the word and he's put his word in writing. So we submit. We say, Lord, I am a sinner. I realize I've read your word. I am in sin. Please forgive me. God forgives us instantly. But then we have to have new desires. God will give you the desires of your heart. He will put new desires inside you. If your desire is for cocaine, God will give you a new desire. He'll cleanse. You need cleansing. You can't just stop doing these things. We need to, we need to change. We need to, if your desire is pornography, if that's where you're lost in, people are lost. I know ministers who are lost in pornography. Okay, Bible believing, but it's, it, it changes you on the inside and you just desire that and you have to ask God to change your heart, to give you new desires so that now I desire to read my Bible. Now I desire to, to go for a walk and look at the sky and just have different desires without those sinful things. I desire to have sex with my wife in cleanliness and purity, without any of those things, or my husband, or whatever the case is. God wants to give you new desires in your heart, and then you will have the desires of your heart. So this is the, fun, this is the key issue in the church today. Does anyone disagree with me? I tell you, I'm so sure about this. I know it. The Lord spoke to me himself. He told me. You, are you hearing what I'm saying? Everyone hearing? This is really key, I'm telling you. And, and it's not about God saying you need to do better. 
It's about us confessing our sin before him and saying, Lord, give me a new heart. Give me a new heart, a heart for you. Because, because the problem is with me. You are good. You are a good God. You tell the truth. But I need to change. And I'm telling you, this is not an easy word to say, but it applies, as far as I know, to me, definitely, and to every one of us. This is why our churches are not on fire. This is why we go out. I, pre I went out preaching at the gospel yesterday. I put an invitation out for everyone to come. I was the only one that came. I'm not judging you. Some of you were busy. Some of you were working. And some of you didn't want to come. And that's okay. We collectively are not on fire for God. <laughs> but that's not how God wants us to be. God wants us to be on fire for him. God wants us to be zealous and passionate about him. So that when we're on the bus and someone says, Jesus Christ. We go, do you know what? Praise God for that name. They've just taken the Lord's name in vain. Very interesting. Nobody uses Muhammad's name in vain, do yeah. they? Very, why is that? Because you get your head cut off. That's yeah. the truth, okay? Sooner or later. Oh, it's the truth. You start going around slandering that particular person, you're going to get in serious trouble. Serious, serious trouble. But on the BBC... On the media, around the world, in the workplace, you can take the name of the true, the, the true God, the Lord Jesus Christ, in vain, and no one bats an eyelid. And woe, woe and betide anyone who makes a stand. But we need to say thank you for that name. Thank you for him. Thank you for Jesus. Praise God. I knew a man, an old, an old minister, and whenever he heard the name of the Lord taken in vain, he would just say, praise the Lord. Why don't we do that? Because we don't have a heart. We don't have a heart. We just allow that to happen. We just allow that to happen around us. Do you know what I mean? If someone wrongs us, we're going to get them. We're going to fight back. We're going to be resentful. We're going to tell other people about it. Do you know what I mean? What about if we have a fear of the Lord and a passion for the Lord Jesus Christ, we're going to realize how much God has done for us and we're going to forgive. We're going to be a different person. We're going to be transformed. But it starts with us confessing our sin and the Lord remaking our heart. He wants to remake our heart and give us a heart for Jesus, a passion for him. You will find that you will begin to lose interest in your phone. You still look at your phone. There's nothing wrong with a phone. Nothing wrong with TV. But how many hours do we spend in our phone a week? I'm not talking about reading the Bible or, you know, listening to a godly sermon on YouTube, how much time do we spend doing worldly activities on the phone? It's not all wrong. I'm not preaching at you. I'm preaching at me and us, okay? We spend a huge amount of time doing worldly activities. We, we watch Netflix. We look at Facebook. We watch football. We do, oh, I'm not saying those things are wrong. They're not wrong. But come on, guys, 70 hours a week. And then someone, someone stands up and says, we need to pray in tongues an hour a day. And it's like, wow, what wacko. What a wacko that is. You know what I mean? Yeah. Read your Bible an hour a day. Bit extreme there, mate. Bit extreme. Not doing that. It's really boring. If I said to you, like, what I wanted to do this week, choose a film from Netflix, a good film. I want you to watch one film a day. You'd be like, that. well, okay. No problem. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll watch two. Do you know what I mean? We can, we'll find time. People say to me, I've got no time. Someone said to me recently, I've got no time. I've got no time for that. I just haven't got time. Well, how many of us don't have time? If you don't have time, take a fresh look at your life. Make some changes. Rearrange your life. We do need to be speaking in tongues privately with the Lord for time each day. We do need to be in the word of God. But how many of us really want to? I know some of you do, <laughs> but mostly the church today doesn't want that. It wants to discuss and argue and reason, be in Netflix and in the world and in other things worse. And then we wonder why nobody wants to come to church. There's no fire. There's no zeal. Do you hear what I'm saying? Is that enough? Today's not really a normal church day. We're just uh, having a celebration for Deborah. Where's Deborah today? Oh, not here. Hopefully, Lord help her. Um, and uh, Nicole's birthday. Woo! I'm glad you came. Let's just pray. 
I tell you what, if you're interested in what I've said, if, if you're what I've said today, if you heard what I said this morning, if you agree with it, if you're interested in what I'm saying, I want you to stand up. If you disagree with me, I'm not going to turn against you, honestly. But if you want to stand up, I just invite you to stand up. Don't stand up because everyone else is standing up, honestly. All right? Just want to pray now. Heavenly Father, I just confess to you that I am filled with carnality. That my heart's desires for this world and the things of this world. And most of the time, Lord, I don't live as though I'm going to stand before the throne of the throne of the judgment throne of God one day. I don't live like I'm going to be with you for, for all eternity. But I pray, Lord, that this is going to change. I ask, Lord, for an outpouring of your Holy Spirit in my life. Come, Holy Spirit. That I find you my delight. That you are my delight. If you're delighted with something, you want to be there. If somebody delights you, you want to be with them. If you fall in love with someone, you think about them all the time and you want to be with them. Sometimes you go to work, you come home to see them. You want to phone them during the day. You're mindful of them. May it be so with us, Lord Jesus. May it be so with us. May it be so with us. Come Holy Spirit. And I acknowledge, Lord, that it's not through human strength. It's not because we can pull our socks up and do it better. We ask you to do it. As David said, everything we have comes from you. So you get all the glory. So I ask you, Holy Spirit, to convict us, to strengthen us to draw us to yourself, to reveal yourself to us in a new way. We're here today and we want you, Jesus. We want you, Jesus. We're not sure of the way and how to get there, but we ask you to help us. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Amen. God is so good. You know, he's so for us. He's for us. God is, say that, God is for me. Say God it, come on. Me. God is for me. God loves me. I want you to point at someone and tell them that God is for them. Okay. Donna and Mandy heard me and did that, right? Where's the rest of you? Have you, have you bailed out on me? Point at someone and tell them that God is for them. God is for you. He loves you. Amen. Listen, guys, we've got a hurting world out there. We've got a hurting world. Satan has brutalized the people of this world. We get on fire for the Lord Jesus Christ and we're going to share the good news Amen. of who Jesus is and what he's done for us. I want us to pray this song together. Change my heart, oh God. Come and change my heart, oh God. I need a new heart, a heart for you, Lord. Change my heart, oh God. Make it ever
You know, Lord, the Lord loves you so much. Amen. He's so much for us. You are his delight. He delights himself in you. As weird as that might seem to you, he delights himself in you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen.